Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the SourceNet with the JWeb Wizard Learning Byte. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right to the example. In this example, we have a user that is connected to VSRX1 and the user basically needs to connect to the internet. And so to do that, we need to set up SourceNet to allow that user to use that external IP address that is attached to the Gigi000 interface. And we're going to use JWeb to do that. And we're going to use the JWeb NAT or SourceNet wizard. And then to test it, we'll have user one communicate with a web server that is connected to the internet cloud. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSRX1. Okay, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. And we are currently in configure mode. And we need to go to security services and then NAT and then source. And then we'll select the launch wizard button. Okay, so here at the wizard, we have three different types of NAT we can configure. We have source NAT, destination NAT, and static NAT. And I do want to point out the graphic at the bottom of the wizard. We can see here in the graphic that it gives us a graphical representation of what this specific type of NAT will be doing. We can see here with source NAT, it shows that we have clients on the inside of a trust network that is accessing or needs to access something on the public network. So let's go ahead and click the start button to get started. Okay, so here we have the source NAT rules and there's currently no rules that have been configured. So let's go ahead and click the add button to create a new rule. Okay, so we have to name this rule. We'll call this source NAT LB for learning byte. And then we can select the traffic direction. Uh, the from criteria, we can select zone, interface, or, you know, zone or interface. We're gonna just go with zone here. And then we have to select the trust zone. Now the client is part of the trust zone. So we move that over. And then where are we going? To zone or interface? We're gonna stick with zone again. And we're going to select the untrust zone. So it's going from the trust zone to the untrust zone. And we're gonna scroll down and we need to specify the source address. And that's going to be 10.1.1.0 slash 24. That's the source address network. Now we can specify individual IP addresses here as well. So if we were just worried about the individual client, we could specify the IP address for the individual client, but we're not worried about that. We could just include the entire network. We're going to add that in. And then destination address, where are we going to? And so since this is to access the internet, we really don't know where the users are going to go. So we're just going to include everything on the internet. We do that by doing four zeros and a slash zero. Click the add button. And then we can specify a destination port range. Now, since we're accessing the internet, we're okay with just using the default of 1024 to 65535 as shown here in the wizard. And then we need to specify an action, what type of action we're going to do. NAT to what? We can specify an address range, which is going to be basically a pull, or we can specify interface. In our situation, the interface will work great. For basic internet access or just your typical internet access, NATing to the IP address on the outgoing interface is going to work every time. So we'll select interface, we'll click next, and that's pretty much the end of configuring it. We can see here a summary of what we're going to do. We could add additional source NAT rules with this wizard, but we don't need to do that. We're perfectly fine with the current single source NAT rule for what we need to do for this learning byte. So let's go ahead and click commit. And that's going to commit the configuration right to the device. And it's done. Committed successfully, perfect. And click OK. And then we can close the wizard. And then we can click on source again. And we can see here that we have our new source rule, source NAT rule. And so let's go ahead and test this. All right, so here is the client device. And we need to make sure we can ping or access the web server. And let's go ahead and just do a ping. And great, things look good there. We are pinging the web server. So let's go ahead and go back to the JWeb interface for VSRX1. And let's go to the monitor workspace. And we can go to NAT. And we can go to source NAT. Okay, so we can see a few things here. We can see the configured rule set name. We can see the name of the rule set, the from and to zone criteria. We see from zone trust, to zone untrust. 
the source net address range, the destination address range, the action of interface. We don't have persistent net configured. And we can see that we have sessions that are created or filled or current. We can see that we have 89 created sessions right now, zero filled and seven current. And then we can click on pools, but we don't have any pools configured. So that's pretty normal. So back to roles. Now, one thing to point out is there is a graph that shows supposed to show up on the bottom here, but it's not with how my browser is currently set up. So keep that in mind. Uh, normally you would see a graph at the bottom that shows the top 10 translation hits. So the other thing I do want to show is we can look at the flow session. And for the protocol, we can type ICMP. Search and we can see the sessions that are happening here. We can see that we have sessions for the first one on the list. We have the source IP address, source port of 191, destination IP address. We can see that where the traffic is going and the port being used there. And so we can see that information as well as the incoming interface, as well as the outgoing interface. Now, the one thing that you can't see here is what it's actually being translated to, what the session is being translated to. We can see that's using source IP of 10.1.1.100, but we can't actually see what that source IP is being translated to. So even though this learning byte is about JWeb, I am going to jump out to the CLI for VSRX1 to show that actual session translation. Okay, here is VSRX1. Look at the session table for ICMP sessions. And we can see here 10.1.1.100 is being translated to 10.10.1.2. And so that's how we can tell because the web server is responding to 10.10.1.2. So we know that 10.10.1.2 is what the source IP is being translated to. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure SourceNet using JWeb SourceNet Wizard. Then we demonstrated how to verify SourceNet using JWeb. And we also looked at the session table in the CLI. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.